Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst with Money and Markets with our weekly marijuana market update. Remember, you can check out the marijuana market update on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com and uh, type in your search for the for Money and Markets. We'll have the green logo. Just find that. Then you can hit subscribe, which is right down there. And then if you hit subscribe, you'll have a little button that will come up. Looks like a little bell. Make sure you click that so you get notified every time we have a new video that comes out. Now, one of our... Uh, uh, subscribers on YouTube has kind of been all over several of our channels asking me to look at the same stock and and uh, uh, Frank has, has posted numerous times and so I figured it was probably about time for me to address that and and, and Frank did, and it was very simple he said Liberty Health Sciences tremendous market period thank you for your thoughts Frank <laughs> and not not as expanded but not, not too bad um, let me dive a little bit deeper into uh, Liberty Health Sciences Incorporated the trade over-the-counter uh, the ticker symbol is L -L -L -H -S -I -F, LHSIF, Liberty Health Sciences Incorporated, and then F. Uh, so first, I think Frank may be on to something here. I, he posted uh, uh, several times, and I think I kind of know why. Um, but I'll get to the why in just a bit. Um, Liberty Health Sciences first, it's a producer and distributor of medical cam cannabis, and it's strictly in the state of Florida. It operates 26 dispensaries in the state, through the Florida Department of Health's Office of Marijuana Use. The company recently opened that 26th location in Jacksonville Beach, and they're in the process of adding another location in the Fort Walton Beach, Mary Esther uh, low area along the Florida Gulf Coast, which is kind of right near Panama City. Jacksonville Beach is on the other side, on the Atlantic side of, uh, of Florida. Uh, basically, their dispensaries are scattered everywhere from Miami to Tallahassee, uh, and they've got very good market coverage in the state. So that, that's great. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a little bit of a limited market, but Florida does have eight to eight, nine million people. So it's not necessarily a small market. And, and its offerings are actually pretty robust. I did a lot of looking into this and I found that they have uh, a good number of, of various products that they offer under different names and, and brands. You've got Zentient, which is a, a CBD THC product that you, it's uh, topicals, vapes, and uh, like uh, pills, things like that. Then you have Pretty Pistol. Uh, it's billed as their sophisticated cannabis experience. I don't really know what that means, but apparently it's a more higher end uh, medical cannabis. Uh, Mary's Medicinals, which is one of their more popular brands, it's noted for being kind of a transdermal patch. So basically, it's like a patch you wear on your shoulder or on your on your back or wherever, and you get your your THC infused through the transdermal patch. Uh, and, and patients apparently find that very popular. Papa's Herb, which is kind of their regular, their kind of mainline medical cannabis product. You have the G-Pen, uh, which is the company's offering in the vapor cannabis market. Uh, Big Pete's, uh, basically cannabis edibles, uh, but it is pending. Uh, it's pending approval from the Florida Department of Health before it can be sold. Um, it was developed in California, uh, but does not have approval yet here in Florida to, to be sold. Uh, Lemon Grass, which offers a wide range of cannabis intakes from body oils to tinctures, uh, and, and, and even lotions, things like that. Venice cookie. This is another edible, very similar to, uh, to, to big Pete's. Uh, it was developed in California, uh, but has yet to be approved by the Florida department of health, but it is on their radar. Uh, clarity brands, which are vapor cartridges that can be used with the G pen as well as the Dom pen D O M P E N. Uh, it's another cannabis vaping product, uh, uh from Liberty health and then honey, which is basically a cannabis oil. So they have, a really strong medical cannabis market and they've got it pretty well covered. And, and financially that has actually paid off fairly well for them. Uh, fiscal 2020 was actually a really, really good year for Liberty Health. Some of the highlights included uh, fiscal year sales of $50 million. That was up 400% from the previous fiscal year. They had a $400,000 decrease in expenses for the year. And I've talked about this in numerous videos before. Cannabis companies are really trying to hone in efforts on trying to cut expenses and grow revenue in order to reach that profitability. It's kind of a math equation. You want higher revenue, you want lower expenses, you get more money in the middle. They had a net income of about $22.2 million compared to a net loss of $22.3 million the previous fiscal year. So they had a net gain of about $44.5 million from uh, fiscal 19 to fiscal 20. They increased their cash from $13.3 million last year to $25 million this year. Um, now, the concern over the stock, uh, it, 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 despite it, the fact that it's had a really good string of great financial news, is that it really didn't translate into big jumps in share price. After it hit a low of about 27 cents in March, 
uh, the stock has only jumped about 40%. And that's nominal, especially when you consider how low the price is. So any movements of, you know, two or three cents are pretty big. Um, but, but Liberty Health didn't really move all that much. Um, and, and, you know, when the news came out in June in terms of its positive fiscal 2020, you can look at the stock chart, the stock barely moved at all, which is kind of uncommon. You would think at that point in time, investors would be a little bit more excited about buying into it because they have very strong financials. This was not the case. A lot of that could be, could, could be attributed to the coronavirus, um, but I don't think so. I, I, I think that, that investors are, have just been very skittish about the cannabis market in general because we've got just so many headwinds right now. Uh, that, are, that are right in the face of cannabis producers. But the one thing I have noticed in the last few days is that Liberty Health shares have started to climb. In just four trading days, the stock rose about 19%. Again, it's a low price stock, 19% doesn't seem like much, but you have to consider, we like to look at momentum. It's buy high, sell higher. So, you know, we want to find stocks that are already kind of making an upward momentum trend before we say, okay, this is one to buy. If it's trading flat or if it's hitting a bottom or if it's sideways, you know, whatever, we tend to not want to recommend those just because you don't really know where they could go. It's always easy to guess, um, but guessing very rarely produces winners. If you find stocks that are already in an uptrend, uh, then you're more likely to find winners uh, that will pay off in the long run. So again, in just four trading days, the stock rose about 19%. Uh, and, and, and that could be signaling that it is due for that uptrend to start. It can be re further reinforced by the fact the stock's 50-day moving average has recently crossed over its 200-day moving average, and that signals a golden cross. It doesn't always happen, but in about 80% of times when stocks find their golden cross, you see an upward momentum trend with the stock price. So while the shares are starting to, finally, to gain some steam, I do like what I see fundamentally from Liberty Health. It seems to be a solid value. It's, it's price to book, it's price to sales, and it's price to cash flow ratios are all well below the agriculture industry averages. Now, it is a cannabis stock, but it is lumped in with consumer non-cyclicals and agriculture, so we kind of use ag as a basis in terms of trying to figure out where uh, where its averages should be. Its margins are also very, very good compared to the rest of the industry. Its go gross margin is about 70%, and that's compared to 7.4% for the industry. Its net margin is 47.4%. That's compared to a negative 272% for the ag industry. So just put that in perspective. Operating net margin for Liberty Health is 47.4% to the good. For other ag companies, it's minus 272% to the bad. That's a pretty wide swath. Its operating margin for Liberty Health is about 22% compared to a negative 340% for the rest of the ag industry. Liberty's 52 week high is about 58 cents a share. I think it can reach that again if current tailwinds prevail. Cannabis stocks are starting to trend a little bit higher because of election news as Democrats have stated they would move to decriminalize cannabis if they hold the House, take the Senate and even get the White House. Vermont's governor also recently said he will not oppose a bill to legalize cannabis in the state. Both those two things converging have created a nice little boost for cannabis stocks, at least probably temporarily. Again, we've got a lot to you know, play out in terms of after November 3rd, how, what does the political landscape look like? And then moving forward, how fast does it take for these things to incur if they in fact do? Um, it's not gonna happen overnight. I've, uh, I've before said it, it may take two to three years before even with a, a fully democratic controlled House, Senate, and White House, it could take two to three years before full on legal cannabis federally uh, is approved or decriminalization could at least be started. So we're starting to see a, a little bit of boost for cannabis stocks that they've missed for more than a year now. But we gotta keep in mind, Liberty's market is still relatively a small one. Uh, they're, the all, they're only medical cannabis and they're only operating in Florida. Does that mean they're not going to expand? Not necessarily, but they found a nice niche here in the Sunshine State. Um, and, and that, but it's, it's going to limit what they can do. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you have to get a medical cannabis license here in Florida in order to be able to, to, to use cannabis medically. Um, you know, that does take a, a good deal of money. Uh, it's not saying it doesn't happen. The state's adding new people to the rolls every week. But again, if you're trying to increase your sales, decrease your expenses, you want to try to broaden your market even a little bit. I'm not saying they should just go out and just do medical cannabis in every state where it's legal. That's not feasible. But if they wanted to, I think what they're doing is instead of expanding their footprint, they're expanding 
their market offerings to get to provide more variety uh, for customers to, 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 to take part in. And that's actually not a bad idea. Um, I think Liberty's put the pieces in motion uh, to, to see their, their stock price jump more. Um, I do see 58 cents per share as being reasonable, but over time, not right away. So I think you, you, if you want to get in now, uh, now is probably a good price point. Uh, and I think it could go as high as maybe 50 cents a share at some point. But again, I think it's going to take time. So temper your expectations, as I always say. Don't expect gains in a day. Don't expect gains in a week. Uh, it's going to take time uh, for a company like Liberty to really establish a strong uptrend and, and establish some footing before it finds some resistance at a higher price. So that's what I have. Uh, that's my analysis for Liberty. Again, thank you for, for the, uh, the numerous comments on our YouTube channel, which, by the way, you can comment anytime. Just go below and, 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 and comment if you have a stock you want to see or uh, want me to talk about or maybe a trend you'd like me to discuss or look at uh, involving cannabis. Feel free to do that. You can also email me at feedback at moneymarkets.com. Now, before I go, um, I want to talk to you about my cannabis watch list on moneymarkets.com. I added a new stock to my watch list this week, and I want to tell you just a little bit more about it. I want to encourage you more so to go to moneymarkets.com to read more about it. I'll tell you a little bit about it here. Um, it's a traditional tobacco company that is that has just entered the cannabis market, uh, and I think it's got the ability to beat the market by three times over the next 12 months. It's, it is solid. It's uptrending momentum. It's got good quality and growth potentials. But again, if you want to read more about it, check out my cannabis watch list. You can go to moneymarkets.com and check out more uh, about the stock that I, that I put on my watch list just this week. I, only, I do it very rarely because I want to really, really want to find um, that, that one stock that's going to, to, to I think be a solid hitter. And I think this one has the potential to be that. As for the rest of our watch list, two of our stocks, Perkin Elmer Incorporated and Schweitzer Molded International, they're also on our cannabis watch list. They are both up uh, as of a Monday. They actually jumped over 10%. Uh, they've paired back a little bit. Now I think Perkin Elmer is about 7% and Schweitzer Molded is about 8% up, which is great uh, since we added those uh, to the list uh, at the beginning of September. So that's, that's a pretty good jump in such a short amount of time, especially for cannabis related stocks. Uh, again, cannabis stocks have started to bump higher as we get closer to the 2020 presidential election. How long that lasts, hard to say. Um, you know, we've talked about decriminalization on the federal level, we've talked about Vermont. The, the cannabis issue is on numerous ballots across several states, South Dakota, Mississippi, uh, just among the several that are, are, are entertaining, uh, their voters are gonna have go to vote uh, whether to approve broad-based adult use med uh, cannabis or just medical cannabis, depending on where they're at. So these all, all these things based on approval could be nice tailwinds for certain companies. Uh, but again, if they don't happen, it could be just another, another wall that cannabis stocks hit. We'll just have to kind of wait and see what, uh, what that looks like. So that's all for me this week. Uh, I love the feedback we get on our YouTube channel and on email. I love that. Just like I said, uh, make sure you go down and comment in the uh, comment section. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. And then go ahead and hit the, the, the bell that comes up. That way you get notified every time we have a new video. If you do want to email me, do, please do uh, email me and let me know if there's a stock you want to look at. Maybe tell me why you're in cannabis stocks, why you're interested in cannabis stocks. I had a lot of great uh, responses to that that we've talked about in previous videos. Still would love to get your, uh, uh, get your feedback there. Just email me at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. Try to flash the, uh, uh, the email address down there so you have it. Uh, coming up this week, we've got a couple of Bull the Bear podcasts. Uh, one we're going to talk about kind of a big event that's happening this week and what impact it has on its stock. And uh, then also Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell and Contributor Charles Sizemore will join me at the end of the week uh, for our weekend uh, edition of the Bull the Bear. Plus, uh, make sure you check out YouTube this weekend for our week ahead where we let you know kind of what's going on on Wall Street before it actually happens. Kind of our way of reading our own crystal ball, if that's actually possible. Uh, you can check that out over the weekend to find out what you need to know as an investor. So more coming up this week. Make sure you, uh, make, you lock down our YouTube channel, subscribe, make sure you get notified. Uh, and then also feedback. Love it. Love reading it. Love reading what you have to say. And any questions that you might have, just do that feedback at moneyandmarkets.com or comment below. Uh, so that's all for me in total. So I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets. Uh, for Money and Markets. Also your host for the Boulder Bear podcast, your marijuana market update, uh, as well as the week ahead. And until next time, everyone, safe trading. <laughs>